Stockpile Hobbies. Welcome back to Stockpile Hobbies. My name is Steve. Today we're going to be upgrading my Thunderjet car with a brand new Jags TR3 chassis. Hopefully that sticker is upside down. There we go, TR3. So I picked up this Jag Hobbies uh, TR3 chassis from uh, Viper Scale Racing. So uh, let's take a look here at the TR3. Let's get it out of the box, go over the specs, and uh, see how it runs with uh, the stock uh, body on it, and then also with the body I'm going to be putting on it, uh, Christine. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, I love the Thunderjet cars. I love the, the little chassis on them. I love the bodies. It gives you a lot more options as far as if you're looking for different things when, when you have a a stockpile of uh, bodies. You like to find things that are different and unique among the crowd. Uh, Christine is definitely one of them. Uh, the problem I have a lot of times is uh, things only can go down the drag strip or they can, and they can't go over on the racetrack. Now, if this is the first time you've been to the channel here, you can see that I have this massive, crazy, high-banked uh, racetrack over here, and it's not suitable for Thunder Jets. This, these things fly down the drag strip when we do the live streams and just regular drag racing. Uh, Christine here and the Richard Petty uh, 43 uh, stock car I have over here. The, I think it's a GNX or a Roadrunner. I don't remember. Uh, they both fly down the drag strip, but I get them like a couple feet around the racetrack and they, they fall. They, they, they can't grip on. The magnet's not strong enough. They fly off the corners and they have that weak little plastic guide pin on them. I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm really excited to try this out, this uh, this chassis here, and uh, see what it can do. So let's get this out of the box. Wow, this looks really cool. I, I really like this green, uh, this body on the car. It looks really great. And uh, this one actually has chrome rims. Uh, that is why I selected this one for Christine, because Christine has the, the chrome wheels on it as well. I know it has the white walls. I don't think we're going to be transferring over the white walls, so um, we're going to keep the, just have it, keep these wheels and tires here. I want the performance out of this, which is why we're doing this upgrade. So let's take our screwdriver and uh, remove the two screws holding the body on. Ah, oh, really on there. Let's just get the screw out. There we go. So look, look at this hot piece of uh, slot car machinery here. Uh, looks Awesome. Looks like a modern uh, car. It looks really similar. It looks like a mini version of the, the, the DR1, actually. DR3 here, here. I'm going to read the specs off of Viper's website here. Uh, silicone front and rear tires, uh, medium hardness, stainless steel axles, stainless steel guide pin. It's got N30 traction magnets in it. Right here, we see them on the side. Uh, it's got polymer motor magnets, uh, bronze pickup shoes, phosphorus bronze pickup shoes. It's got Delrin gears, it's got a 7T pinion and a 25 tooth crown, and a 6 ohm armature. Uh, so, the armature is the same as it you get in the V-Spec or even the Bracket Master, 6 ohms. The traction magnets appear to be different, the tires are different. Uh, I think this thing's going to scream down the tracks. So, first thing I'm going to do is take some of my uh, Racer's Edge high speed bearing oil here. You can get this online, it's in the description like I mentioned. I'm going to start lubricating the axles where they meet the chassis. So these wheels pop up from the top, it looks like. Let's check that. Yep, perfect. So all I gotta do to oil this is put a little dab of oil right there and right there. Run the wheel. We're gonna do the same for the back now. Go right down into the slot with it there. Just a dot, that's all you need because it will sling everywhere. All right, there we go. Now for the motor, the armature here, we're going to hit it right here. Does that spin? I'm going to try and get it right behind the pinion. Let that work through. And right on the armature where it goes through the bushing here. Just like that. And now we're going to get some of that Teflon grease they talk about. I found this stuff on Amazon. Teflon. Come in a big tube. This will last my whole life. And then another. And all you need is... That's even probably too much. <laughs> and all we're going to do is... We're going to spread this out across the pinion and the crown gear here. Just a little bit like that. Work it through. 
as it rotates, it will spread throughout. You may have to add a little bit more, just like I am, right there. That looks good, right there. That's what you want. Total coverage, all the teeth have some on it, and it's on the pinion. This stuff will wear off, and notice it disappear, and that means it's time to reapply it. We're going to run the Thunder Jet and the TR3 at the same time and see how they compare. Okay, let's run the Thunder Jet and the TR3 at the same time on the dyno and see how they compare. So, as you see here, usually the blue number, the amps, the lower the blue number, the faster the car is going to be on the track. It's not, the motor doesn't have to work as hard to produce the energy that it's needed to go down the track. So, Looking at this right now, I would say the Thunder Jet would be faster down the track, but I know this one has a different armature in it, and that number corresponds to the armature rating as well. So the armature does, the type of armature in the car does impact it. And you see the Thunder Jet here, it's, oh, let's get her back on. There we go, we're looking at about 0.13 amps and about 0.20 amps for the TR3. So if these cars had the same armature, Theoretically, Christine should be faster down the track, but like I said, there's a different armature in this one. It's going to have a different draw, and it's producing more power. So even though that blue number was higher over here, the amps, I expect the TR3 to be faster down the drag strip than Christine. So right before we get to that, I want to ask, if you're not subscribed to the channel, to please consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit that uh, Unicron symbol down there at the bottom of the video. Hit the subscribe button on the video. And also, you know what? Leave a comment. Let me know. Are you enjoying the videos? What do you got in your collection? Anything cool? Do you see any standouts here? Let me know what you got. I'd love to hear about it. All right. First down the track is Christine. Whoa, that was slow. 1.302. Wow, I remember this car being faster than that, but that's what I'm talking about. The dyno is just bench numbers. It's like real life when you're talking about drag racing. They're just numbers on paper. You actually got to put the car down the track to see what it's going to do. I'm going to run it one more time and see if it gets any higher. 1.233, got a little bit faster. All right, I warmed up the TR3. Let's see what it does. It's almost twice as fast as the Thunder Jets. That is awesome. It's a little bit slower than a, a Viper V-Spec. Uh, let's send it back down and do one more. Oh, that's so cool. All right, second one. 0. 0.810. Wow. I'm digging it. I really like this body on the car. I didn't think I was going to like these as much, but they're, they're cool. Like I said, I got all these other cars. I don't have any like these. Uh, I almost don't want to swap over uh, Christine to it, but uh, I like Christine a little bit more. Let's, uh, let's change the body now and run it with uh, the Christine body on it. So, mounting the Outer World Christine body onto the TR3. I had to use the Thunder Jet screws, not the ones provided with the TR3, because the the screw holes on the body were smaller. So that's not the problem. Problem is, we we have too much contact with the, uh, the body here. Uh, it would either need smaller wheels, but that would reduce the amount of space between the chassis here and the tire, which can cause it to sled instead of roll down the track and actually not get any movement. So the front wheels have a little bit of rubbing and the back wheels need a ton of clearance. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to grab my trusty file here, my rat tail file. I'm going to go through the wheel wells and start giving it some more space. Not a lot, but just enough so that we can... I can't even rotate the tire. It's There it goes. It's, it's really dragging on the body. You can see the line it's producing here, right there, as it scrapes the body. So I'm going to file that out a little bit and come back. All right, so I spent some time sanding the wheel wells, rolling the fenders, and have good clearance there. Front wheels. I think they're rubbing. That's good. This side too. We have clearance all the way around. So let's see how fast Christine can go now. All right, she's warmed up. Let's see what happens. 0.776. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I like how it looks like evil Christine when uh, it goes out hunting at night. It has the chrome rims. It doesn't have the white walls. 
it has the black tin on it. it just needs the flames, right? That'd be kind of cool having uh, flames all over it. I have it on fire. But uh, let's do one more run. There we go. Seven nine two. All right, let's get it over to the racetrack, see how it does. So I did check, and the guide pin is uh, larger in diameter than uh, the AFX one here. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to swap that out real quick here, and I think I can do it without having to take the body off. I'm just going to grab the one here. Let's pull that back. There it goes. Ah, uh, the front screws are blocking it. How much for that idea? Yeah, I'd rather just have it off now. I want to break it. So, so much for that. But, yep, there it goes. Now we get to the new one here. Now with the new one. I needed to use a 3 16th drill bit, and by hand, I've worked it through now. There we go. Alright, so this is the main reason why I wanted this chassis, is because I wanted to be able to use the Thunderjet bodies on this high-banked racetrack that I have. Let's see what I can do here. Did a 1303 last time without pushing it. Let's race this time. Full throttle almost. Three quarters of the way. There's full. Almost full. Yeah, I can keep it pretty much almost mad. Oh! <laughs> Crashed and burned! Oh no. Oh, we gotta do it again. I want a time. Loud. Yeah, I'm getting some power loss there. I gotta pick up the other cars. Going 12.26. That's pretty fast. That's really cool. So that's really cool. Christine is now fully operational on both the racetrack and the drag strip. I love the performance. I love the looks. And now I get to use uh, Thunderjet bodies on my tracks. I don't have to worry about telling people when they come over that they can't use that one here. They can't use that one there. That's a big thing. We come over. We got five kids down here. They're all running around. A couple adults. It's you know, if you don't want something uh, fragile to get grabbed, right, and to get thrown down the racetrack. <laughs> but it's really nice just knowing that I get to the move, remove a couple cars from up here and everything is runnable. So awesome. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and keep having fun, everyone.